Now we're going to do one of the final uh, tool demonstrations for the hand tools, and that's cutting a piece of lumber with a handsaw. Again, it's a, it's a preference, but I'll tell you from personal experience, if you buy a cheap uh, saw, you're not going to get the life out of it, plus it's going to be a lot more uh, difficult to cut whatever you're trying to cut. Stanley makes great tools, all right? Um, um, and then there's a higher end tools too, all right? But stay away from the cheap stuff. All right, so we're going to show you just how to cut a piece of 2x4 using the handsaw. Now remember our, uh, our nifty little pipe vise. I'm putting my flat stock in the flat bar and not putting it down here in the pipe vise. Now, square tape measures in the toolbox as well as a pencil. All right. We just want to cut off about, give or take, three inches. Now I would even make it maybe six inches. Makes it a little bit easier to cut. All right. Now we don't want to waste a lot of material, all right? but we want you to get the understanding of what has to happen. Now this being the square, you've already read about this, so you should have a basic understanding of the square. But the straight edge side always goes down on your edge and then just mark it off so that you have something to work with. Now some people may want to go down and you know get all this. You don't need to do that. All right. You're only in the learning phase right now. The other thing is we have these little protective bars. All right. All that is is um, Wurz Bowl um, piping, um, PEX piping, and we put a slit in it so we can cover the blade and so that the blades don't get damaged. Now, my saw, I'm going to again start with a kerf. All right. The big thing that you need to be aware of is that six inches that you are going to cut off is going to get measured at six inches. If it isn't six inches, you're going to cut another piece. So pay attention to where on this line you are putting the saw. This line equals six inches. Well, the width of this blade, if I put it over that, I'm cutting off sixteenth of an inch and when you go to measure it's going to come up short. So you want to move that blade onto what is known as the dead end of the wood. This is the good piece that we're using this time. It could very easily be on the other side because we want to use this piece of the wood. All right? But for instructional purposes we're going to go on the opposite side of the wood so that we can come up with six inches. Again, I told you that you're building a saw curve, all right? So I put my cutting edge on, in this case, the left side of the line, and I draw back. That is a saw curve, all right, in wood. We did it in the metal, now you're doing it in the wood. Now you're going to be able to follow that line a lot more. A lot easier to do this. All right. Now you just want to start off gentle, all right? And you want equal pressure. Now, you see how I'm trying to use the whole blade here? All right. I can use my fingers as a guide, but if I go too slow, I'm going to be getting it stuck. All right. But once I'm down into the, the wood, I can keep moving straight at forward. Now 
when I get to the end of this, I want to tilt my blade at about a 30 degree angle. Hold my piece of wood and come back, draw back on it, and it will drop it into place. All right? Now, there's my measurement, and there's my wood, six inches. All right? That's what you have to do to make it come forward. The other option, the other uh, thing that you may want to do is see how square it is, how square the cut is. All right. So if you're using your little cart uh, speed square, you can see that I have no gap here. It's all aligned perfectly straight. All right. If if yours comes off all crooked, then you're going to have to redo it again. All right. But like I was saying. This, this stuff does not come overnight, all right? Saw curve. Then equal pressure. If you try to do this too fast it, or bend it, it will cut, it will go wherever you tell it to. But a good quality saw will stay in its tracks absorb any type of small bending, but still stay on track. All right, again, 30 degree angle. And you want to make that real sharp uh, cut through to finalize it so you don't have a bunch of burrs on the end. All right, that's what you have to do to pass the hand and power, hand part of the hand and power tools. All right. Thank you.